Well hello it's Cliff here from Down Under. Well in this video I'm going to be introducing this new invention. I've been putting on my Mad Professor cap lately and doing the gyro gear loose thing and developing this new prototype. So what it is is a thread machining attachment prototype. It's number two. So you could call it TMAP2 and what it does is allow you to bolt it onto a milling machine or put it on a surface grinder and thread mill or thread grind an internal or external thread in a wide range of pitches. So all you need to do is put the part in the chuck and set the pitch to the thread you want and wind the handle and cut the thread. I'll go into an introduction of this unit in this video. Here I'm cutting an 8mm metric thread, uh, one cut to full depth that's 0.78 deep and 31mm uh, long. I'm still using the same hand ground fly cutter, just off hand ground to that 60 degree included angle. And uh, once I'd blown off the swarth, the uh, thread was silky smooth and the nut just spun on. I'm really pleased with the surface finish of the thread, the thread form, the uh, pitch accuracy. During the early development stages of this attachment I was looking at different ways it could be mounted on different machine tools. For example here on a conventional style turret mill like the Bridgeport or the Condia I've got the uh, turret turned round on an angle and I've mounted it off the back of the table just temporarily with an angle plate there and some g-cramps um, set it over on the helix angle and did my first trials just with a fly cutter just hand ground and uh, First, the first cut came out really well. One advantage of mounting the attachment there is that the angle plate in some situations could be left attached because it's out of the way on the end of the table and this would mean that you could connect the attachment up more quickly and remove it quite easily and just leave it sitting there on the table for periods of time. There's different ways that this thread milling attachment can be installed on different machine tools. If you have a milling machine that has a right angle attachment, they're available for Condias and Bridgeports. Um, that would be a very convenient way to do your thread milling, to put the attachment. I don't have one, but this is just simulating it there. And that way you can have the thread milling attachment, for example, on the left hand side of the table. This is probably the best position to set up the attachment if you have a horizontal mill with a horizontal spindle or if you have a universal uh, milling machine like this one that also has a horizontal spindle. Here I'm tipping the attachment over at the helix angle using a protractor to set the angle of the helix angle that allows for a very accurate thread milling form. I'm just using a protractor for this uh, prototype version. In a production version you'd have graduated degrees and this could be tipped over very quickly and easily. Obviously being able to tip the attachment over at an angle tip the work over at an angle allows you to thread mill a very accurate form and in contrast to for example on a three axis CNC where you interpolate the uh, thread uh, with a thread mill that is vertical and a vertical thread mill uh, generates errors in the thread form as you probably know because you're not tipped over at the helix angle and the cutter cuts into the side of the thread form and generates 
um, errors in the thread form but you don't have that in this situation where you can tip a rotating workpiece over at the angle of the helix angle. I'm going to talk about helix angle. Here I've set a protractor on 3 degrees and I'm just going to line it up visually for you to see that is approximately parallel with the thread so you can see there graphically the helix angle on that screw is about three degrees and that's the angle you want to set your uh, thread milling cutter uh, at relative to the part uh, so that it sweeps through the gullet of the thread without cutting on the side of the threads it's not highly critical because both the both the screw and the cutter arc away at a curve and so you're only talking about the tangent point of the two at the contact point and so it can live with a small amount of discrepancy there with the angle but obviously if you had it set at zero degrees or at 90 degrees um, there would be a risk that the cutter would cut in and uh, alter the form of the thread so that you wouldn't have a true formed thread and this is often a problem for thread milling. I'm cutting a few more of these 8mm threads and trying to get a feel for how, how long a thread I can cut with an 8mm uh, diameter and projecting it further out of the chuck, projecting the fly cutter further down so I'm getting less stiffness. This thread is about 36mm long and um, I haven't sharpened the cutter yet and it's still going strong. I've cut several of them. Um, so it seems to be quite a durable cutting process. I don't know how much longer I could cut by projecting the work further up and the cutter further down. That would depend on the diameter. For external thread milling, there's no reason why I can't use a fairly large diameter fly cutter like that. But for internal thread milling, and that's a phase of development I'll be getting into soon, I've been looking at different cutter options. For example, this cutter is a purchased cutter, mass-produced purchase cutter. Here I'm developing some cutters that have very small insertable tips in the end and are held in with set screws from the shank end there. And here I've been grinding some up out of solid carbide end mills, old broken end mills. So I've got different options there for internal uh, thread milling. This attachment will be able to be used for internal thread milling, cutting nuts and internal threads. And I look forward to getting into that development phase soon. Here I'm cutting a very long and slender thread so you haven't got much part stiffness, much work stiffness. This is a 3mm thread, 0.5 pitch, 0.31 depth of thread. Cut it in one cut and it's gone surprisingly well. There isn't any noticeable deflection of the work problem with this single point fly cutter and um, it's cut a beautiful thread silky smooth so the process of thread milling with a fly cutter on long slender work works better than I thought it would well that's a beautiful little thread you can see there there's a standard 3mm cap screw and it will easily cut the length of a standard cap, scr cap screw or bolt thread. I could have gone further but I would have needed to grind the fly cutter away clearance to allow me to safely get right up to the shoulder. And that's another advantage of thread milling in that you can cut right up to a shoulder without an undercut. When you're screw cutting in a lathe you need an undercut to run the tool into 
and a little bit of clearance to give you a moment to stop the lathe and reverse it and so on but with thread milling you can just wind the part in until you're almost touching the shoulder and uh, you've got a, a very nice tidy little run out situation. Well this thread cutting attachment has a unique pitch generating mechanism within it that allows you to set any pitch or any threads per inch within its range. There's an infinitely variable number of settings unlike on a lathe which uses a gearbox and change gears um, there's a series of steps and a limited series of options but with this unit there's an infinitely variable uh, range of pitches or threads per inch between in this case this is formatted to go from almost three millimeters pitch down to a very fine point something of a millimeter I haven't tried the very finest setting but right down below the very finest of common threads um, and so it could be formatted to a different range of pitches but that seems to me like a very useful range uh, for most workshop applications so um, I, you sit with, with a single adjustment the uh, pitch that you desire and I'll just demonstrate now how accurate that pitch is well, let's use the example of a M20 2.5mm metric thread to demonstrate the accuracy of the pitch generating mechanism. It can be set to any pitch within its range of uh, almost 3mm down to a very fine pitch in either metric or inch um, or imperial. Um, I've set this on 2.5 millimeter pitch so if we rotate it round here you see the little marker there coming around to the pointer and we're on zero on the dial so one rotation should be 2.5 millimeters hopefully you can see that okay coming up to 2.5 millimeters another rotation another 2.5 millimeters of the pitch now if it's got errors in it it would get worse at one end or the other or it would uh, gradually get worse so let's just do a whole lot of traverses and come around to zero still on the marker on the zero and we're right at the end of the travel there but let's come to here so you can see we're still on the marker still on the uh, zero mark on the dial indicator so it's demonstrating there that it generates a very accurate pitch even though it is infinitely variable between the range of the uh, mechanism. a close-up look at that cutter and the thread it's cut a beautiful finish the reason why I've installed a three jaw chuck on this prototype unit is because it allows you to use reverse jaws and grip large diameter work. Here I'm going to try cutting some larger threads, internal and external. Um, and a three jaw chuck is very handy because it allows you to grip hexagon parts like nuts. So it's very versatile. If you have it floating on the back plate, you can dial it in perfectly concentric as well. But it may well be that it, the spindle should be designed to also accept an ER collet system such as an ER40 which would give an infinite range from one millimeter up to whatever the limit is there 25 millimeters is it and um, they they grip really well and are great for work holding as I've demonstrated in previous videos
One big advantage of thread milling is that for short threads and threads coming up to faces, you can run the cutter very close to the end of the thread. You don't need an undercut and room to disengage your single point threading as you do in a lathe. You can just stop at the point just short of touching the face or the end of the thread. Here I'm cutting a 52 millimeter diameter thread, threaded spigot if you like, coming right up to the face. So this thread is uh, a 1.5 millimeter pitch and a 1.07 depth and I cut that thread in two cuts. And you can see the cutter there is just shy of the base. I'm going to trial cutting an internal thread. You can see I'm using a much smaller cutter here. This is one I've ground from an old end mill. You're much more likely to use a small diameter thread mill for a couple of reasons. One is that obviously you've got a lot less room for a big fly cutter. Another reason is if you have a large fly cutter type thread mill with a large sweeping arc, it's very critical more critical on an internal thread that you have your helix correct, your helix angle set correctly. Uh, it's less forgiving of errors. If you uh, don't, if you're unable to have a helix angle set, for example, in CNC three axis CNC thread milling, or um, you don't have your helix angle set correct, and you've got a large sweeping fly cutter, the uh, arc coming in contact is a concave arc um, and it's much more likely to cause profile errors or form errors to the thread than with external milling. Well, that internal thread mill that I ground uh, myself with the D-bit grinder is pretty basic. I didn't go to a lot of trouble, um, but it seems to cut fine. It won't be to the same class of quality as a manufacturer of uh, internal thread mills like that one. Um, but it's fine for this test. It's cut a nice thread and uh, the same pitch thread and the same depth of cut, but I've cut it in two two cuts also and obviously running the spindle a lot faster because we have a smaller diameter cutter. Let's have another look at that internal and external thread milling. Another advantage of this mechanical pitch generating mechanism is that once the pitch has been locked in position the thread is set and it can't go out of sync. So you can take one cut or multiple cuts and you can't miss the uh, pitch. It is permanently engaged and it will only cut that helix. So you can cut it one time or ten times or take another thou off to get the fit right and you won't lose your position. Unlike on a lathe that's using change gears and a lead screw, depending on the method you use, you can very easily lose your position and cut the thread in the wrong position. I don't want any of you viewers to think that thread milling with this attachment is a, a very quick and easy way to cut any thread in a few seconds. Um, if you haven't had a background in thread machining and screw cutting, um, you might draw that conclusion. I don't want to be overly optimistic. Um, th thread milling a large diameter thread is quite a big task. Thread milling a small thread is a much smaller task. Let me try and explain why. If you look at screw cutting in a center lathe with a single point tool where you run into an undercut, say for example near the head there, 
um, you need to take multiple passes and you need to run the spindle really slow. For example, 45 RPM. You need to run it really slow so that things aren't happening too quickly and you can manually uh, reverse the spindle or disengage the lead screw. And you might take, say, 20 cuts. Um, and the larger the thread, the more you're going to be using the power of the headstock. Um, but it's still quite a big job to cut an M20 thread. But if you're cutting a very small thread, for example, this M8 thread on a thread milling attachment or a thread milling setup, it's very rapid because you can spin the cutter fast and turn the work slowly. And in one cut, one roughing cut, one finishing sizing cut, you can cut that thread out in no time at all. But when you're cutting a small diameter thread in a center lathe by single point screw cutting, you still have to have a low RPM in order to have time to disengage at the end of each cut. But the surface speed is very slow and it's very inefficient. You know, you're running the thing ridiculously slow and taking 10 passes to cut out the thread. It's a big job, far quicker with thread milling. If you want to uh, cut a large thread with a thread milling attachment, such as this situation, or a large thread via thread milling, it is also quite a big job. Like the center lathe, you're still removing a lot of material. A large thread like that has 10 times the metal to be removed compared with a small thread. And it just takes a lot more time to cut a large thread. This thread took three or four roughing passes and one finishing pass. It's a much bigger job. You wouldn't use this method to make a hundred parts. You wouldn't use a center lathe screw cutting manually to make a hundred parts. You'd use a CNC lathe where you can multiply repeat cut automatically the threads and you'd need a big powerful CNC lathe with a high torque spindle to do that type of work for production of big threads. So what we're talking about here between screw cutting in a lathe, comparing it and thread milling, for example, with this attachment is for small volume production, small quantity production, where you're making one or two or three or four parts. And this system really makes sense. It shines on small to medium threads, thread milling, and it's uh, like a big thread in a center lathe, it's much slower for large threads. I want to be really upfront about that so you guys fully understand uh, what to expect, what the limitations are. You know, this is still a big task to cut a big thread. As soon as you start getting up to the bigger threads like this one, it takes multiple cuts. Um, unless you had a multi-tipped cutter, I thought about grinding up a multi-tipped cutter, but the downside of that is that if you do something wrong um, and you reverse the cutter or run it the wrong way or uh, do something stupid, you'll chip the cutter and that's a, an expensive cutter that you've destroyed. With a single tip fly cutter, you can um, easily resharpen it. And so I'm thinking that the single tip fly cutter makes sense in this situation just because of cutter cost. So I'm trying to ascertain with these trials and share with you my thinking of where the best potential application and market for this attachment is, where it will shine and be successful. I think it's really important to identify that, identify where it shines and where it's ordinary so that we can focus um, in that area. I think it's going to be v very likely be successful for internal thread milling as well, for cutting nuts and internal threads, and for uh, thread grinding. I've tested it enough to see it's got great promise, but I need to spend a lot more time on that and um, and, and uh, improving my setup for that and I'll probably make videos of internal thread cutting with this attachment and thread grinding in the future. This video is primarily about uh, early trials of external um, thread milling with this attachment 
and um, I can see it's got huge potential but we do need to target uh, where the best applications and potentials and therefore market is. There's all sorts of specific uh, non-standard jobs where this attachment will also shine. If you need a really good finish in a high tensile, difficult to machine steel, um, a carbide fly cutter gives a lovely finish, lovely surface finish. If you need a nice tidy run out, um, you'll get a nice tidy run out with a, a milling system, thread milling system over a screw cutting system where you have to have an undercut and all that sort of drama. If you need specific unusual threads this machine can be set to any thread within its range whereas um, on a lathe you've just got a limited number of steps. You can use the attachment to extend existing threads for example I've just trialled this M12 high tensile cap screw so you see if I can show it here visually so you juggle the cutter set, set the unit to the correct pitch thread juggle the cutter in to the existing thread until you're just touching on the gullet of the thread like that and then just wind it on and extend the thread as far as you want to go and tungsten carbide fly cutter for example will very easily cut high tensile steel bolt but you try doing that with a die even a high speed steel die it's a massive task they're expensive and you'll chip the teeth of the die after a couple of bolts and very quickly uh, destroy your threading die. Much better to do it by a thread milling process. Here I'm using the thread machining attachment to thread grind a 12mm metric thread on a surface grinder. So that's a thread grinding application for the thread machining attachment. Well, I think this product has got a really big potential market and um, it would be beyond my capacity as a specialty instrument manufacturer to manufacture these to do production of this type of product justice. I think I need to find a machine tool accessory manufacturer that specializes in making this type of product and are keen to add it to their product range. Um, I think that my role should be limited to that of the inventor and developer and uh, also doing R&D and trials as to all of its various potentials with internal thread milling and thread grinding and thread grinding wheel dressing attachments and so on I can do and then I enjoy doing the uh, inventive creative design work and that's probably the extent that I should be involved in this project so if you would like one of these units or you want to assist me please feel free to share this information, to send a link to any connections that you have um, or people that you could think of or industry that might be interested. Sooner or later, by sharing this around the world, it'll find a home, it'll find a manufacturer that is keen to add it to its product range and make it available to all of us. You can see I haven't disclosed the internals of the uh, thread generating mechanism uh, that comes from the my original invention back in 2009 and it's formatted in this mark ii prototype in the form of a thread machining attachment um, i obviously haven't disclosed the design because i need to have some intellectual property that i can sell to a for example a manufacturer that wants to pick up this product and add it to their range. So thanks for watching this video. Um, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I really appreciate if you could um, link this video through to any contacts within the industry that you have. Feel free to give me any comments and thoughts that you have about this unit. 
Um, I'm going to need all the encouragement I can get to keep developing this product. The more time I put into it, the more successful it will be in the end. Thanks for watching. Cheers.